There are people who like long videos and people who like short videos. If you like short videos, skip to the quick explanation at this timestamp. If you go to the channel of Ben Shapiro, which I advise against, you can see Ben's current attempt at making his channel die slower. At least that's what I conclude from the Social Blade page. If, however, you order them by his most watched video, you see something very interesting. The infamous and thoroughly debunked trash fire titled Ben Shapiro destroys transgenderism and pro-abortion arguments, in which he, of course, does neither of these things, and I replied to it on stream, so there's a link somewhere. But there is one video of his that is more popular, titled Congresswoman tries to call Ben Shapiro racist, regrets it immediately, which is uploaded by himself, so he clearly thinks he's making good points. Basically, in the video he argues that white privilege cannot exist in a modern day. We all know his tactics, he talks fast, he isn't informed on the issue he's talking about, he ignores opposing points completely and uses buzzwords like logic and reason. He plays the victim and usually the title says the opposite of what the video shows. <laughs> and amazingly, every single one of these things is shown in this one four minute video. And I know making videos debunking the content that Ben produces is pretty pointless at this point. But you know what? I don't care. I'm making a video on it. I'm three weeks in rehab. My body craves something to work on to drown out the withdrawal symptoms. That and the fact that this video is one of the most popular ones of one of the most popular conservatives is going to make this video so much more satisfying because lots of people copy Ben's argument style. So you can legit use the things I say in here in the arguments you are having. You've been arguing, right? Each one, teach one, uh, or we're going nowhere. Uh, preferably someone close to you, so they're more receptive. This is a very important homework for you. Spread the word, link my videos, stuff like that. Anyways, for full context, I linked the original three-hour recording. Spoiler, it's boring as fuck and Ben barely appears. But Shapiro did us a favor and uploaded the highlight or at least what he sees as the highlight on his channel. I would show you the whole clip, but YouTube doesn't like it. So here's the painfully typed out transcript. Pause the video to read it. So you know I'm not taking anything out of context of his video. And of course, his three minute video is also linked in my description. So essentially, Congresswoman Plaskett explains what her understanding of white privilege is. Then Mr. Shapiro says it doesn't exist because there are no examples of it happening. Then the congresswoman names examples of white supremacist activity happening and Ben admits he never heard about it, presumably because he's completely uneducated on this topic. And despite the fact that his argument dissolved like sugar and water, he just starts rambling about the administration and whose side they were on. And right then he cuts off the video so you don't have time to comprehend the waterfall of words that he just spewed at you before the YouTube autoplay inexplicably shows you one hour of interrogation footage. Uh, I don't know how that works either. So basically, she says, this is what I heard white privilege is. He says, no, it doesn't exist because you can't show it happening. She says, actually, here's an example of it happening. And he says, Oh, I didn't know this evidence existed because I am uninformed on the topics I claim to be an expert on. But despite my argument having been completely nullified, I will switch the topic and cut off the video right now so my viewers don't have time to process the verbal excrement I just vomited at them within the span of 20 seconds right before my making the title seem like the argument didn't just fall apart completely. So naturally, the next day, Congresswoman Plaskett resigned in shame and Ben Shapiro was named the new God Emperor, Lord Shapiro I, who would lead humanity to a future guided by logic, wisdom and truth. Except when it comes to inherited wealth and understanding of basic history, or just 
playing a game of Monopoly. Uh, yes, I took some liberties with Ben's thought at the end, but that is the short version of what this is. And do you see what it's missing? Uh, let me show you the title again. Congresswoman tries to call Ben Shapiro racist, regrets it immediately. Well, I'm afraid she didn't do that. She didn't call him racist. She just asked him what his opinion on white privilege is while mentioning how she understands the term. This was a perfectly reasonable political question. When you use this word, what do you mean? And she didn't regret it because when Ben made the argument that it doesn't exist, she had an immediate counter to which he replied. And I quote, remember, this is in the Senate in front of the news of the whole nation and all the important politicians of the USA. He said, as I said, uh, uh, um, this is the first time I'm hearing about it, honestly, but uh, uh, really, yeah, but, but from hearing about it, maybe because it's local. At which point I would have called an ambulance because someone sounding like that is having a stroke. This is where the short summary gives way to the long detailed explanation. If you are bored already, I have a video where I dunk on not one rightist, but rather seven at once, because they all use the same argument. The link should be in some card somewhere, but for me that never works, so it's linked in the description as well. Here comes the long version. The video takes place in a public hearing of the 115th session of Congress, which featured a hearing about freedom of speech and censorship of right-wing ideas on the internet and in academia. You can tell this hearing was called in 2017 by the Republicans. Ben Shapiro was part of this hearing because, and these are his words, he has first-hand experience with anti-free speech people protesting when he preaches his highly conservative and borderline fascistic policies. The fact that protest is an expression of speech seems lost on him. So he's arguing that people who don't follow his ideas should have less free speech, meaning being banned from demonstrations. So his speech can be freer. I guess all speech is free, but conservative speech is freer or something like that. You also may have noticed uh, that the clip in question doesn't have anything to do with the topics of the hearing. And you'd be correct in that. Not sure how they switched from wah, wah, people are banning right-wingers for violating their terms of service by demanding genocide to the topic of white privilege because the entire hearing is three hours and I don't get that much spare time in rehab. So I only watch the parts with Shapira in them. Feel free to watch it all and leave a review in the comment section though. Let's now go over this one by one. The Congresswoman opens by saying, that Ben Shapiro in the past used the words white privilege as a way to say that white people are disadvantaged and that she, along with pretty much anyone educated on the topic, actually uses the word differently. She explains that to her, white privilege is not white people getting more for the same work, it's just people of color making less, which is the exact same statement but easier to understand for Shapiro and such. Of course, white privilege is an actual thing that has actual effects on real people, which has been shown in many studies. White people on average get more paid, but work less overtime, get more jobs even. And this isn't like statistics from the 80s, this is today. White privilege, of course, isn't some secret plan by the almighty postmodern neo-Marxists like um, well, I can't think of an exact one right now, but that's definitely not because there is no such thing as a postmodern neo-Marxism. White privilege exists as a series of millions, even billions of interactions between people of different races in the US and the world. And it's not always on purpose. Maybe the HR department hires more white people because they subconsciously prefer people who look similar to them. There are some studies to say that. But just because this incident of white privilege is subconscious and driven by some primal instinct doesn't justify it staying that way. It explains the why, but it doesn't offer a solution. And I hope to believe that most people are racist on purpose. Personally, in the past, I used racially questionable terms before being told why that is not okay. 
But looking at the facts, not Ben's feelings, if we look at all of society, we see a bias against anyone who isn't a straight cis ma white man. There are two ways to deal with this as a rightist. Either you pretend white privilege doesn't exist, or you say it's too large a problem to fix. So which one will Ben go for? Both. He says he is perfectly willing to fight any racism that you can stand up and point at, and then he will fight that racism. The issue he's missing here is that this debate was never about whether there are individual racists or individual acts of racism. The issue is that the data shows that the way society is structured right now, for historical and economic reasons, disadvantages all non-white people, which is functionally the same as advantaging white people. Ben's problem is that of many conservative types. They try to take large-scale issues like government issues and apply a very narrow-minded view which only works in small-scale hypothetical scenarios. Seriously, look at any right-wing video, uh, like this one about cookies from Prague University. They have this cookie baker and his small business and who are just suffering so much from all the things uh, like health regulations. As example, he explains that for every batch of cookies they make, they need to send one to the FDA to make sure it's safe to eat. And he suggests they instead only test one-tenth of the batches to widen his profit margin. And of course, in this small scale with small profit and with a well-meaning baker, it makes complete sense to reduce the amount of oversight to allow this small business to flourish. But the FDA regulation doesn't only apply to our baker friend here, does it? It also applies to Cookie Incorporated with a thousand employees and millions in profit and with a hierarchy from the board of directors to the CEO to the managers to the supervisors with everyone telling the person below to make more money quicker. One of them might have a smart idea. What if instead of flour we use some cheap alternative which people can't taste? And since only every tenth batch is tested, nine out of ten can be altered this way and nobody would know. Once you think about concepts as scenario for the whole world, small scale solutions like this are irrelevant. In a large corporation, some anonymous person can slightly change the flower for 9 out of 10 matches. After all, they have a quota to fulfill and a profit to make. It could cause issues which are even more basic. There may be some contamination in your batch of cookies, which is confined to that single batch. That's a huge health risk not to check every batch. This issue with small scale solutions is tightly intertwined with Ben's reply to the congresswoman. He says he would be happy to fight against individual racism, if you point it out. But if you point out that for some reason uh, the mean household income for people of color is lower than for white people, he won't understand it, or at least pretend not to understand the issue. Ben is what is called an individualist, which is in line with his ideology. By definition, individualism is a social theory favoring freedom of action for individuals over collective or state control. So basically everybody watches out for themselves without being able to rely on help of others. We are all struggling to achieve and hence those who achieved great wealth must have been the best at struggling. I'm not getting into eating the rich in this video though. But wait, if the rich are rich because they work a lot, why are people poor? What makes people of color poor? Well, it must be because they work less. At least if you are using only individualism, like Comrade Ben. They must all be lazy. And at this point, Stefan Molyneux starts talking about race and IQ and you're in the far right pipeline. Maybe don't go there. Go to my channel and binge watch it and end up in a left wing pipeline. I promise it's better. The fundamental issue Ben Shapira and most conservatives online are experiencing is because they use individualism. Everyone cares for themselves first, if need be, at the cost of others. This is where I would start talking about capitalism, but today I won't. Instead, I will say that individualism itself 
despite being a horrible way to explain wealth inequality, can actually predict some things. You have to remember that individualism is a theory, a concept, just like all ideologies and philosophical ideas. And to be fair, if you watch a group of people compete for one thing, or only looking out for themselves, it can accurately describe and make predictions, like in the show The Bachelorette. Individualism will predict that these guys will do everything to sabotage each other for their own advantage. At least I think I haven't watched the show. But in other systems, individualism won't work at all. Can you imagine if everyone in your household would cook for themselves only? Or if a doctor said, you got breast cancer, but I get more money doing silicone implants, so sorry, you will die. So individualism as a theory can work to explain things. But as we established, it's not great when it comes to large-scale issues, like race relations. Judging by how Ben Shapiro says that if there is a direct display of racism, he will oppose it, but he doesn't believe in white privilege, uh, because that would be a concept rather than a physical example. And individualists always need an individual example. That's why he spends an entire paragraph speaking of how harmful the term white privilege is, because at its core, he doesn't understand it doesn't help that understanding it would mean having to accept that people of color may have more experience in some matters than yourself, which Ben seems to be 100% incapable of doing. I will now introduce a second theory. Just like individualism, it is a theory which will work sometimes and not work other times. And the theory I'm putting forth is the one of the social group. In this theory, instead of looking at 7 billion people individually, we divide them into groups. We can make up which groups and see what happens. Famously, two men with magnificent beards formed social groups from the workers and capitalists. That is, of course, Marxism. But I don't think Marxism will explain white privilege very well. Because, like all theories in the social sciences, Marxism describes some things well and others badly. The class conflict would be one it explains well, White privilege is one it would be suboptimal for. In theory, we could make up any group we want to. We could say that your hair or eye color makes you part of a particular group and we could make studies and statistically say which eye color theoretically has the best advantage in life. But you can also use race as a social group. This is what the Nazis did. Remember how Nazi Germany's population was super communist before the Nazis? The fascists just took the Marxist theory of class and replaced it with the fascist racial theory of the group. Now the factory owners are no longer the enemy. The enemy are the Polish and the French and especially the Jews. So even fascism can accurately be described by group theory. Let's now do the thing I've been dancing around for the past two minutes. Group theory and race relations. There are many ways this can be done. We will focus on the US for this. We could split our groups into racial groups. White, black, uh, a mix of white and black, Latino, a mix of Latino and white or Latino and black. Uh, and what about a kid which has a father that is Latino and black and a mother who is white and a mix of white and black? As you can tell, it is getting very complicated very quickly. The US census officially accepts five races. White, black, American Indian, Asian and Native Hawaiian. Because this is a YouTube video and not an academic paper, I will just lump them all together and call them people of color. Sorry. So here we got our theory done. We have two groups, whites and people of color. Let's compare them. People of color get worse education. They die more from giving birth, actually just in general. People of color get worse health care uh, and of course lower household income and higher crime rates. Um, but. If facts won't convince you, um, a fellow white person wrote down 26 things she can do and expect, which a black person can't. These range from the minor, I can choose to blemish, cover or badges in flesh color and have to more or less match my skin, to more dramatic ones like I can speak in public to a powerful male group without putting my race on trial. And I can choose public accommodation without fearing that people of my race cannot get in or will be mistreated in the place I have chosen. And all of them, even the most minor seeming pointless ones, show that while society accepts that black people are around, 
it doesn't necessarily include them. Like number 20. There are a lot of posters, postcards, picture books, greeting cards, dolls, toys, children's magazines on the market. But how many feature children of color? It gives off a feeling of not belonging. But the one that stood out to me was, I am never asked to speak for all the people of my racial group because I know what that feels like. Because I am LGBT. It barely comes up on my channel because that's not what I chose it to be. But to be a real life trans woman in conservative Austria means many questions. And I tell you, it's not questions you want to have and you shouldn't have to explain like yeah, your existence or to have to speak for your exa entire community like that. Um, I am trans, end of story. This person is black, end of story. Now let's get into the juicy bits and have a look at racial discrimination. I bet five quid this video will be the third in a row to be demonetized. Please support me on Patreon. I think at this point I clarified that people of color are doing a lot worse than white people in many situations. Yes, it can go the other way around sometimes, but calling your cracker is on a different level to not being hired because the name is ethnic sounding. I think you'll agree. The fact that white people have it so much better is what us SJW cucks call white privilege. And it's the privilege not to go through the same shit people of color go through. Personally, I don't like the word. It implies whites get a $500 whiteness check from the government once a year. The way I would put it is that we don't have white privilege, but we have ethnic disadvantagement. People with e ethnic backgrounds just have disadvantages compared to white standards. So that is why privilege explained. And that's why Ben's reply makes no sense because he's A, an individualist, not capable of understanding group theory and B, unwilling to accept the countless statistics that show that people of color are disadvantaged, which proves that white privilege as a concept exists. At this point, I'd like to make a side note. The fact that people of color on average have less money, worse education, lower IQ and so on isn't because of some secret Jewish conspiracy to destroy white culture or because race has anything to do with these factors. There are entire studies debunking the idea that heritage or race influence your life independently of social interactions. So black people have a lower average IQ because they have been and still are kept out of good schools because of their skin color, not because their skin color influences IQ. The reason why America's racial makeup is the way it is now is probably best not told from a white European alcoholic literally sitting in rehab one ocean away. So here is a ContraPoints video that pretty much explains it. To turn to the video I was originally re replying to, the congresswoman clarifies that she isn't talking about individual cases of racism like Shapiro, but rather the mechanism, whatever it may be, that causes the demographics we see right now. Individualism has a very obscure view on this. Individualists may recognize all these issues, bad schooling, low pay, low IQ, but instead of looking at how it became that way, they blame the individual. If you can't afford health insurance, just don't buy a phone. If you were born in a neighborhood which were the only employer or drug dealers, it's your own fault for not opening a bakery. If you don't want to be shot by police, maybe wear a different skin color. If you want to get proper education, just go to a non-existent good school in your area. I think all these arguments are obviously stupid, so I have no reason to explain what's wrong with them. And all these replies do one crucial thing. And that is sticking with individualism. To pretend that even questioning parts of the system is taboo and off limits. That's what Shapiro is doing. He sees that others have it worse than him, but instead of helping them, he just blames it on them and justifies keeping them down. Ben doesn't have a secret plan to be racist, of course, but he will defend racist things and call it his free speech. Many people do that. I used to have mainstream political views and I wasn't too different, you know? The video continues with the congresswoman, who at this point gave up on the group theory argument, just stating an individual case of organized racism. 
This surprised Ben and he startled for a second because he was clearly prepared to quote unquote debunk white privilege. Yeah, I would, it, it, this is the first I'm hearing about it, honestly, but... It, really? What, yeah, um, but, but from, from hearing about it, it, maybe it's, it's local, I mean, I'm from L.A. Um, but in any case, um, I'm more than happy. And this is how the conversation ends, with Ben and the congresswoman agreeing that this case is a specific example of racism and is, in fact, bad. Of course, Ben succeeded in his main goal, which is not changing his mind. So he still denies that white privilege exists, despite all the evidence, which I linked in the description for your enjoyment. Also, at this point, he mentioned this, that he's the number one target of anti-Semitic harassment on Twitter. I don't know where he got that number, but I'll believe it. And I think I can explain it. Ben Shapiro draws in many people with his quick replies and snappy videos on topics which most never heard about. They just know Shapiro sounds cool. And then the algorithm shows you more anti-SJW content. And then some more YouTubers dare to say that not only are SJWs crazy, they are dangerous and they're coming for you. And the only thing you can do to fight back is by organizing with fascists. This is, of course, oversimplified. But that's how the pipeline goes. Normie in, anti-Semitic Nazi out. And which Jewish celebrity do these fascists know? Who do they direct their anger on? Ben Shapiro, because he's the most prominent conservative and Jewish person online. Let's now have a look at that title. Congresswoman tries to call Ben Shapiro racist, regrets it immediately. Let's break that down. Did she try to call him racist? N no, all she did was inquire about his understanding of white privilege. She just asked for an opinion. She never accused anyone of being racist. And I'm having a hard time imagining a thought process through which the title would make sense. Maybe because she mentions white privilege and Ben thinks white privilege means anti-white racism. So accusing him of not understanding white privilege is talking about him now racist. See, this is genuinely the only way I can make sense of this, and it doesn't make sense. This also leaves me with the question, why did he upload this mess in the first place? The title has nothing to do with the video, his replies have nothing to do with the questions, and the whole thing ends with him being humiliated by showing exactly that evidence which he said doesn't exist. The fact that this has a 95% like to dislike ratio with 13 million views is unsettling because the only way to not dislike this video is to fundamentally not understand anything going on in the video. Only if you think white privilege is some made up nonsense would you be convinced by a fast talking man saying that. But if you, I don't know, ever talk to a person of color or read any of the statistics or you know any accurate history books, the only thing that made Shapiro seem like he didn't lose the debate was to give it a cool title and then rely on being overly fast enough for people to not notice before the autoplay shows you Ben's next video where he does the same thing but to a college student. The basic formula for a Shapiro video is make basic writers research on a topic which you don't understand then think of jokes you can use to deflect real arguments. Then hold the debate using both deliberate misunderstanding and jokes to ignore arguments. Then make one gotcha moment and cut the video off. Then add a title which is completely unrelated to the video itself. So in conclusion, this is the average Ben Shapiro video. Just set in Congress. Why this has three times as many views as his second most watched one is genuinely a mystery to me. But I'm sure some engineer working at Google, whose job it is to work on the YouTube algorithm, has no clue either. In the end, I hope you learned something in this video about group theory, individualism, or white privilege. Uh, in conclusion, Ben was wrong, as usual, and it took me this long to reply to a three minute video. Would you like to talk to me on Discord for a small fee of five euro donation? Or by clicking on the link in the description, you can. 
um, then we can vibe in a depressed way together while I write out the next seven weeks of rehab. Wouldn't that be nice? Thanks to everyone who supports me through these harsh times, it's not easy. And you can see my vlog on my second channel, Vicky2000. Bye! And of course, very much thanks to Conrad Arson, Darius the Bird, Dave Lewis, Eric Betts, Xander Corvus, Attila Nimitz, Carissa, German Pineapple, Daniel Hyman, Daphne, Dr. Grimm, Emily Marigold Glasson, Gabi Gita, Hurlington Curlington, Josh C, Josh McClark, Klaustrup, Matsijay Rojek, Nana Epema, Neil Banderi, Nora Quinn, Ollie, Pout, Ramadeville, Roman Breyat, Sean Murphy, Skylar Magnum Turner, Stairmaster Chef, Stephen and Trey.